Well, we're really just going to talk about hitting different trails in, in uh, Johnson County. And please feel free to chop, jump in at any point in time. Um, I'm going to run through some that I've, I've found helpful uh, and enjoyable. I'm skipping some of the big ones like Shawnee Mission Park, because I assume most people know about Shawnee Mission Park. Um, we recently uh, discovered, <laughs> is poor, probably a poor word, but we found Little Creek Milk Creek, uh, Little Mill Creek uh, Park, and it's uh, over close to 79th and, and Flum. And we, we really enjoyed uh, it. it. You can enter from a couple of different locations, one being from Heritage Forest Park. Uh, this has probably about six or seven parking spots. It's just uh, you know, along uh, 81st, I believe it is. 81st, 83rd? 83rd. It's along there. 83rd? 83rd. Okay, and so there's some parking spots to the left of where the sign is here, and then you can walk on down. Um, and it's a, it's a delightful little, little place there. I like old gnarly trees and there are lots of trees with vines and, and, uh, uh, strange shapes to them. And what I found interesting, there's a plaque here and I zoom in on it, uh, about, uh, how this gentleman, uh, Zayner, I guess it pronounced, it created or planted all these, uh, Catalba, uh, trees in the hopes of selling them as uh, telephone poles. Uh, and uh, I guess that <laughs> never materialized. And so he, he left uh, behind a grove that the family used for picnics and all. But it really, uh, some of these would not quite be suitable for telephone poles, <laughs> but they're, they're quite picturesque. And it's just a nice little walk through that area. I shot this one and then in a different season, I shot it here. Uh, and then a little close up, you can see it's their welcoming spring. What's kind of fun about this one is that at certain times of year, a lot, a lot of them are gone now, but last fall, <laughs> there are a lot of little uh, fairy doors and, and characters along <laughs> the trail and, uh, and painted rocks and things of that sort. Um, that people. <laughs> Late, leave there for the kids, I guess, uh, or for us adults who enjoy that sort of thing. But I, I just, I love the little uh, walk through these Catalba trees because it's, it's again, very picturesque. It's winding. It's very, very pretty. And here's a Easter photo. And as you walk on, I, we have walked that last fall and this spring. And of course, in spring, you get some nice uh, uh, daff, uh, daffodils and, and other flowering plants along along the way so and it that trail then leads to uh, little mill creek north and south parks uh, which are off 80 must be 80 i should remember 87th 79th somewhere in that range anyhow um, and it's a nice wide open area that's used for for soccer and other games and has a little playground for the kids, but you, you can walk through it, keep walking, uh, kind of, I want to say north, but I'm not sure it is north. Uh, here's, here's kind of the layout. If you see down here is the little park where we started out and the path wanders on through uh, up to Little Mill Creek Park here. And I guess that is 79th, that was close enough, I guess. Uh, and then it continues on further and eventually connects all the way in through to uh, back again to 79th Street. But it's a, it's a nice little walk. And the nice thing about it is you, if you want an hour and 15 minute walk, you can do that. If you want a half an hour walk, you can do that. And you can enter either at that Heritage Forest Park or at a little uh, Mill Creek Park, either, either one. Hmm. So... Who's been on that one? Ah. No. It's, uh, I, I like it. It's this as you walk on further north after you go through uh, Little Mill Creek Park South, you get the walkway goes over the a little bridge here and uh, continues on. And it actually splits north of the park 
So you've got one area that dead ends into a, a neighborhood and the other way uh, it dead ends onto, uh, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if it's Lackman or if it's on 39th <clears throat> Street. I, I walk and enjoy them. I don't always keep track of this, the roads I'm on. The other favorite is uh, Millbrook Park. How many of you have been there? Uh, yeah, just recently. It's, it's fairly new. I'm, I can't remember when they opened it up, but it's probably been within the last year, year and a half, two years at the most. Uh, and of course, it's kind of sandwiched between right at the corner of Somerset and Knoll. Right. Um, and as you can see from the map here, um, up in this corner is where the, the clubhouse is. And we walk, usually walk this yellow path and take it all the way over here. And then we actually go up a uh, row all the way to Franklin Park and then come back down, take a, either go through the neighborhood or walk through the park here, either one. Uh, but well, actually the neighborhood would be over here. This is th still through the park. And then it circles the three, the three pools or ponds here. And it's, it's a very beautiful area. The, it's being filled in by houses, expensive homes, um, but that, that's, I guess, part of the arrangement is that they will be building, they're building homes all through this area and off to the, their apartments over here. But it, it's a beautiful little walk and it's one of our favorites. It's fairly level, which is nice for some folks. Um, it's got a little bit of a hill on the backside here, but other than that, it's pretty level, which is nice. And you can rent a bike. If you're a biking kind of person, you can uh, use this Casey ride bike. Here's the parking lot in the back and behind where this photo is takes you over towards the, the clubhouse. <clears throat> and I've got this, uh, somebody I'm sure knows what kind of grass this is, but it's just a very pretty grass with a plume on the end of it. Mm -hmm. This is looking off towards, you can see in the upper or kind of the middle right, you can see some of the apartments. And they've got a playground out there. I didn't climb the rock. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I think the kids would have shoved me off. But there's usually kids up on the here, and there's a playground off to the left, which is kind of nice for kids and grandkids. And here's kind of a more of a wide view of, of uh, the pools. You can see one, and there are two more beyond that, with the, again, housing and apartments and condos off to the right, and again, to the left also. So the nice thing is you, you can walk through this entire area um, and pick a number of different paths to add some variety to your, to your hike or your walk. And they've got a little uh, pool. Here's some of the houses that are being built, but it's, it, eventually it's gonna have houses and apartments <clears throat> on the outside and in the center but you're gonna have this trail that will go around the three pools and, um, and give a nice little bit of scenery. Jonathan, is that about 91st and Knoll? It's Knoll and Somerset. Yeah, okay. So between 95th and 91st sort of also. I'm not sure where 91st cuts in there. Um, right it, at the corner. Is it right at the corner, does it? There's another road in between Somerset. Somerset is kind of on the uh, be the north side of the park. Knoll, our 95th Street is on the south side. Knoll is on the west. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's another road in there and I'm not, maybe that's 91st. I'm just not sure what it is. I threw this in just to show that it has some nice color uh, different times of, of the year. <laughs> oh, that chicks. <laughs> I like the uh, the nature around there. We've seen baby ducks and baby geese, and a crane every once in a while too. So, if you take that outside path. Um, there's a, it will take you up to Franklin Park and it's a nice little circle um, walk up there. It, to give you an idea where the red arrow is, 
that's where you would come it up from um, Meadowbrook Park, walking along the road for a little ways. And that's a nice area. It's a little strip mall on the on one side, and then the the park on Meadowbrook Park on the other side, and some homes too. And then we just walk this circle. And by the time we do Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook Park and Franklin Park and loop back to the parking lot, it's about an hour and five, an hour and 10 minutes for us. We're medium to fast walkers. But obviously, if you want to do a, a shorter thing, Franklin Park has parking right here in this area uh, and along here. There's parking, so you can park anywhere in here and just take a nice little loop of uh, anywhere from three to five, uh, half a mile. Anybody familiar with Franklin Park? Yes. <laughs> Walk there regularly or just pass by it or? Just aware of it. Okay. And, um, at the previous one of these, I learned that these are uh, Osage orange trees, and I, I just like them. I think they're very, uh, I, I describe them to my wife as gnarly. That's probably not a technical term, but I really enjoy them and their color. They look like something out of a Disney movie for kids. Yeah, yeah, they, they would qualify. Do you know, the, you know the history of the Osage orange, perhaps, in this, in this part of the country? Uh, they were imported from much farther east when they began farming this area before there were uh, good, strong uh, steel fencing. And uh, in order to keep cattle and other uh, uh, livestock in, they, plant, they planted them very, very close together so that they themselves became a fence. Oh, wow. Um, and... Uh, so they, they, they became picked up as a, kind of a common tree, but they really started just in, from an agricultural standpoint. They, I, I they, they would then to, top them off, and then the shoots that would grow would be straight, and those were also cut for fence posts. Mm -hmm. And they would sometimes dig a trench and chop up the green uh, fruit, put it in the trench and grow the trees that way. You more than you know more than I do about them. Good, Linda. Well, I just think they're beautiful trees. And here's uh, some more, and you can see they have a little pavilion there. Uh, Friday nights during the summer, they have concerts, free concerts there. And so we've walked through uh, purposely on some Friday evenings so we could enjoy the music as we as we walked through. I have one last thought about the Osage tree. If somebody gives you um, uh, chopped pieces for you to burn in your fireplace, don't do it. It's extremely hot. Uh, my, my dad told me that he saw uh, uh, regular uh, burning, um, you know, back, back in the older days when people did burn lumber just to keep warm, uh, that if you put a the whole stock of Osage orange in and burn them, they would melt your stove. Uh, they have an, one of the highest BTU contents of any wood. They're oily, but the Indians, the Native Americans favored them for uh, bows because they were flexible because of that oiliness. So you'd find it traded way beyond where it grew. Hmm. Where, where did they import, if they brought them into Kansas to create Texas fence? Texas and where? Arizona, Texas, oh, okay. Texas and uh, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Wow. That's the nice thing about these chats. You learn something every day. Thanks, um, you're probably familiar with uh, the Corporate Woods Founders um, Park and Shannon Valley. And there's a, there's a nice path that goes between those two. You can enter cor corporate woods, obviously, either from uh, Antioch or from College Boulevard. And um, it's, uh, it's a nice little path. The, the other interesting thing about it, um, you may know this, but there's that Indian 
Creek Trail that runs across most of Johnson County, kind of diagonally from, I think, uh, northeast to southwest. And uh, it, uh, the Corporate Woods is part of that. That trail there is, is part of it. And you can actually, I, I often hop on at, um, uh, I think it's Indian Creek Recreation Center, which is over on 103rd. And I can walk through there. It goes literally under 435, takes you over to Corporate Woods. And from Corporate Woods, you can go all the way over to Shannon Valley. Uh, and so it's all part, this is all part of the American Discovery Trail. And you'll see these signposts along the way. And you'll find other signposts uh, here and there too. And I guess uh, I'm, they're working on this uh, e-bike system that goes throughout Johnson County. And so I just threw this information up there to uh, uh, let you know that they're, they're working on bike and hike trails. And, and as you go through uh, corporate woods on that trail, there are, there's a place where you can pass over the, I think it's Indian Creek there still. Uh, and uh, there's another path that wanders all through, but I, I you stay on the, see, beyond the um, south side of the, of the creek and you can continue on over or under 435 and 100, 109th street first and 435. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the, the creek along, along the way. Uh, and I, I pointed this out in an earlier session, but I always find it interesting that they have uh, a little placard here just under the underpass. You can see the underpass up here at the very top center of the screen. And it talks about 100, uh, 111th Street, uh, which of course is College Boulevard. Is it is that Bob uh, Harris right there in that center? Um, that could be. I did not blow that particular picture up, but I, I'm always fascinated by two other pictures on there. One is the, the one of uh, 111th Street, the way it used to be. And then the other one I'm always fascinated by is uh, Virginia Krebs, uh, our founding mother of the college and, uh, and very active. So, and then you get all the way over to Shannon Valley. There's some parking spots there. So you can actually enter that path at that point or at Corporate Woods or at the Indian Creek uh, Recreation Center or a number of other places further on north and uh, east. So here's, here's a map. Here's 103rd at the very top. You can see the, the one arrow. And this pathway takes you all the way down to the Corporate Woods Founders and to Shannon Valley and through Indian Valley Park down to Cross Creek Park, and it just keeps going. So you can literally uh, jump onto the trail at any point along the way there and walk one way or the other. And, and it also ends up, it goes and connects with Kuvira Park, which is at just north of, or I'm sorry, just south of 119th Street in Kuvira. Um, and it's a, it's a nice little park. You can go park there and start your walk from that location. And by the way, if you haven't guessed, my wife and I are trying to explore every trail there is in Johnson County. We have a ways to go, but we're trying to hit them all. <clears throat> and of course the key is finding a place where you can park uh, and then walk from there in one direction or the other and you know, loop back if you, if you want. Well, if you park one place, you gotta loop back somehow or other. So, and it's, uh, it's a nice little, Quivira Park is a nice little park with some nice landscaping in it. And it's got bathrooms, which if you're on a long walk, uh, are always helpful. If you leave Quivira Park and walk up to, <clears throat> excuse me, to Quivira and make a right-hand turn, which would take you north, you're going to cross a bridge. And this is the, the view over the, the bridge. <laughs> and then on the right-hand side is a pathway down and under so if we were to go back behind us, we'd go to Cross Creek and all those other parks that I was talking about. If you go under and go forward, you go behind, uh, I think there's a Papa John's and some other commercial businesses, but it's a very nice, quiet little path. And winding at times, it's just a nice, pleasant little walk. 
you get to a point here where you'll see uh, you go off to the right and it goes to uh, another, just a little park. This whole thing is actually part of a park, but you'll see the, the sign for the park on the, as you go to the right, go to the left and you can continue on. It dead ends pretty soon when you go to the right because it goes, it, it has the name of the West Cape Park, but up here, pretty quick here, you run into homes. So I like to go left. Um, and this is from the other angle, the, the Westgate Park sign. But everything you've been walking through is really part of Westgate Park. Uh, at first, I thought I, I came out of it at this point looking for some little park with playgrounds and all, and there's nothing there because the whole strip there that from uh, across the road from Quivira Park all the way up to the sign is all part of Westgate Park. So, has, by the way, before I leave that, has anybody been taking that walk? Many, Hopefully. many times because I live there near there. <laughs> oh, okay. so what have I missed? What's what's along there that I've missed? Um, you know, on some of those steep slopes that haven't been uh, touched in a long time, there's some really nice native areas with wildflowers in the spring. And um, it, it's a great between Flum and Quivira is a great walk. If if I go back here and go left, if I remember right, it's been last fall since we were out there. Um, I think that's where you get into some very steep. Isn't yes. it yes. Steep, up and down? And isn't right. that area where you go through where there's some, um, I don't, you probably know the tree, but I don't. It's a kind of a pine-ish tree that drops its needles uh, very, it's almost like a pine forest area you go through. Is, am I thinking about the right place or have I got it confused? Um, I don't remember that, but I, you know, I don't know. Well, there's, there's, I think it's here. It might be another site that okay. uh, has some very native pine trees. You literally go through an area that has pine needles all over. I may be getting oh. confused after I've seen, been through all these uh, parks. So, well, then, uh, what used to be and still sort of is the, the newest park in Johnson County, I think, is Big Bull Creek Park. I think there's a new one in Lenexa that's going to open up this summer. I think I just read about. Uh, this one is down Edgerton Way. And on the map here, you can see the north and you can see uh, I-35 coming in. And there is, um, you can see, I think we got off here and you've got a little uh, restroom area and a little, some pavilions and a little playground. Uh, and if you go further, here's, here's a kind of a flat, the, in red is a kind of a flat paved trail, which is nice, a nice trail. But what we really like doing is going this way. And if you go around, go on the uh, paved one. And then these are paths which are just dirt paths. They're literally hiking trails. And the purple goes by a cemetery, which is where the, the star is. And this is the one where we got lost one time and ended up being out there. We went for an hour walk and ended up about two and a half hours later finding our Ooh. way back. Oh, so, yeah. So you kind of want to have a map. And the yeah. map they have there is not real clear. So I went on online and found uh, a map that was a little, a little clearer that had the, the, the A, here's the A, the B, the C, D, and E. Those are all post markers along the way. Oh, and I should go back one second here. We haven't explored this area down here, the J, K, L, et cetera. That was, is supposed to have been opened sometime, maybe the spring, uh, but the, I don't know, I guess you call them a park ranger was telling us that you can still go in and park over there and walk. So it'd be, it'd be taking the backward path up through here. So, but this was enough for us. We, we got all the way out here to the F marker and that was enough for us. Has anybody been out to build a big Bull Creek? I, I've just done the little loop that you described, the purple around uh, to A and then back to the parking lot. 
but it but that winds through those Osage orange trees and it's just great. It's just really fun. Um, they do close it um, when it's wet because they they don't want it um, bikers and hikers on it. Well, what what I found fascinating, and you'll see in some of the photos I'm going to show you, is that it uh, it doesn't it reminds me of like the Rocky Mountains or some of the other areas. It's it's very rocky, very hilly, more so than than even though I have lived in Kansas for forty some years, it still surprised me how how rocky it is and how how beautiful it is in there. There's a quarry which I assume the park at one point was part of. I'm not sure even about that, but you can see the trucks off to the side. And then there, here's a playground area with a little creek that goes through. It's and really a, a creative uh, playground for kids. Very creative. Yes. It's, it really is uh, very inventive. They did a good job. When you get to, when you get ready to leave the paved paths, you'll see this, uh, a sign like this talking about it being hiking and mountain biking trail and et cetera. Uh, and uh, they, they tell you, even though some of us don't read, <laughs> that you should check the map, uh, be prepared for a long walk, bring water. Um, we didn't do any of those the first time. We did do them the second and third time. So, so you learn sometimes by hard knocks. And here, here's a little bit of the, the path. And uh, that's my wife. And I guess that's me. And I, I just love this area. And here's a little bit of the, the cemetery that I mentioned. You can see you, you walk by it at one point on the one loop. And uh, if you're like me, you have to duck every once in a while. And I, I love the, the stone wood sculptures that are natural out there. And uh, just another view. And I don't know what this tree is, but it always fascinates me. I see them every once in a while around it's here. A, it's a locust, isn't it? Honey locust, yeah. What kind of locust? Honey. Honey locust? Okay. Yep. Well, it reminds me of a, um, a more extreme version of the thorn tree we had in our backyard when I was a kid. And I ran into that thing too many Ooh. times to want to get close to this thing. Because these needles are bigger, but... They, they still fascinate me. Uh, and you can see these are the markers I'm talking about that you, if you have a map, you kind of know which way to go. If you don't, you're in, <laughs> yes. And the first time we went out there, we, we got to a point where there was a marker and I said, I don't know which way we go. So we went one way and walked for about 10, 15 minutes and the thought, this doesn't look familiar. So let's go the other way. So we walked back the other way and we finally found our way out two and a half hours later. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's very rock, rocky, but it's, uh, it's our kind of favorite hiking location. And during the summer, there's some nice wild flowers and uh, just very, very interesting scenery as far as I'm concerned. I just enjoyed it. And you can see the hill here that, again, it, it surprises me every once in a while when I run into that kind of territory and in Kansas and the other nice, property. really nice, yeah. And we do want to go back and do that that other part, that more southern part of the hike, and maybe even try to do the whole thing one of these days. So, and here's that Osage Orange. Uh, last time we did one of these, if you were on the last one, I. I showed this and that's when I think Juliet Kincaid or somebody told me it was an Osage orange and I didn't know what it was prior to that, but I just love the color on that, that root. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's just a nice little trail. So <clears throat> we're going to come all the way back up north and then head east a little bit to Tomahawk uh, North Park. And... Um, there's a, there's a parking space. Uh, this is close to, must be close to 119th Street, I believe. <clears throat> and if you've driven down Tomahawk Creek Parkway, you might have seen this sculpture off to the side, which marks kind of the entrance. And again, it's a just a nice winding path. 
uh, through some trees and past some ponds. This is heading north out of that, that park. And the pathway actually goes all the way up to Leewood uh, City Park. Again, past the, the different ponds that are in there. So it's a nice shady uh, route. They're doing some construction at the other end of it. Um, and uh, here's, this leads, leads over to, well, I think that's actually leading up to this area, which is part of the Leewood Park. So, so this is the bridge, I think, if I remember right, that leads over to the, the Leewood Park, which is here. And they usually find a good sampling of geese around there, like so. <laughs> and um, if you go a little bit further across another bridge, you come to this uh, dog park. If you like dogs, you can you either take your dog or go and watch the dogs. And they, <laughs> it's a, it's a leash, leashless, you know, area. So the kid, the, the kids, the dogs can just run and enjoy it. And if you fur go further uh, north and east, you get to the point where you can see uh, Warnell Road up here, you see the highway. Uh, and we've uh, actually walked further than that. And um, all I can tell you is it gets less and less picturesque as you go further and further north and east, but that's <laughs> my bias. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's a very nice walk and you can travel quite, quite a distance there. If you go, I, I jumped all the way back to the other end. If you go back to uh, that parking lot area that's there at uh, 119th Street and Tomahawk Creek, and then you keep walking south, you're going to end up at the Island uh, Park with uh, the sculpture here. It uh, has a nice little circle, so you can circle around and just head back to wherever you parked your, your car. And one of my other favorites is the International Sculpture Garden Trail at the uh, Arboretum. And I, if you've been out there at all, you've seen this particular sculpture. As you go around the lake, uh, you see some, some very nice uh, sculptures. I don't remember names of all of them, but I just enjoy them. And of course, in some of the heavy garden areas, mm -hmm. you have some, some beautiful sculptures. This is one of, my, one of my favorites is right there by the, the waterfall, the Cascades. Yeah. They were there for, some of them were there for about 18 months. Are some gone now? Yeah, some are gone now. Okay. I haven't been back there since fall, so. Yeah. In fact, some of these photos are from 2018 and 19 and 20. One of my favorites, I just, I, uh, I have a weakness for bronze children, I guess. I like bronze. And the, the green is around the lake where all the sculptures I've shown you so far are, but the International Sculpture Walk is actually in the red. And so as you come into the park, that loop, um, maybe I'm just too narrow mind, too tunnel visioned, but I missed it the, you know, one week for the first several years that we went to the Arboretum, I missed it. I didn't realize there was that trail until finally I wandered off down that way and found that there's actually uh, quite a few sculptures back there. And this is one of my favorites and I like it in different seasons. And then going over to Heritage Park, by the way, is any I'm assuming you have all been to the Arboretum. Have you all been down to the Sculpture Walk? Yes. Okay. I'm seeing some yeses and some noes. You really need to take a walk through there. That's got, I don't know how many sculptures there, is, there are in that area. I haven't really counted them, but I, I gave you just a very brief sampling. There are probably at least 20, 30 or more sculptures on, on that little walk. And Heritage Park is one of our routine ones. We like to come in and uh, park. This is off of Flum. You enter at number one up here. And we park in the parking lot where the little star is. 
most of the time, and then take a walk around, around here. Uh, but we also take this little detour up to the side and it leads up uh, to an area where there are some pavilions and all. And then we walk back and go back to our parking spot. Or if we want to do a shorter one, we park at this second star, which has parking and just walk up the hill and then back down. So let's, let's take a look at this first go around. And oh my goodness. Ooh. This, this critter wow. was there last fall. I haven't seen him since. We saw him only the one time. And unfortunately, I don't really have a good zoom on my camera. But I, as you can see, there's a, the walking trail that goes all the way around the lake and then into the wooded area and then back around and connects with the, uh, the shoreline of the, the lake again. And here's a, another view of it. This is the other side of the lake. And uh, nice evening. And so that is all in this first loop. Now, if we take a look at the second, this little tangent off to the side, um, it, you can walk up and there's a, uh, a little bridge over a, the creek. I'm not even sure what creek that is. Um, I don't know if Indian Creek goes that far or if it's something, something else, but it's uh, very picturesque. And there's a little pond back there. You often see people fishing or picnicking on the shore. And I just like these little woolies. And there's uh, there are benches all the way along. So there's a guide that includes all the Johnson County uh, parks. In fact, you can if you go to I know Shawnee Mission. Let me think. No, Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook Park has one of these brochures. You, you can go in and, and request them at the uh, desk in the, the, the uh, clubhouse. And if you look at this, you can all the red lines are uh, trails within Johnson County, biking, walking, uh, hiking trails. And so you can see that we are very richly blessed with lots and lots of, of trails. Uh, and we're, again, like I mentioned earlier, we're, we're trying to mark off every one of them. I'd like to eventually have covered every one of them. Uh, but so far, my, my favorites really are Big Bull Creek and uh, Heritage Park and uh, Meadowbrook. Those, the Meadowbrook to Franklin Park. Those are the ones we tend to do the most, although yeah, it's hard not to love an outdoor walk, so. What's the date on that brochure? Um, this one is, I'm not sure there's a date on this one. Now this image here is off, was off the website um, two, three months ago. Okay. The brochure may be more recent than that. And in fact, you probably can't see real well, but it has, uh, It has two sides to it, one of which shows uh, kind of a close-up of some of the more close-in ones, and, uh, and still more. So there are a lot of a lot of uh, options. It has the parks, most of the parks, and most of the trails listed. Okay. Any questions or comments so far? Thank you. Excellent. I have a bonus for you. Uh, if you're interested, Dick <laughs> Stein has provided some non-Johnson County trails for us to take a look at. Good. Tell me when to move on to the next slide, Dick. It's, it's all yours. Uh, not, okay. We're not in Kansas. We're not in Kansas, for sure. Um, probably most of you have been to the place that I'm going to show you, uh, but I like trails also. This one's the Appalachian Trail in Great Smoky Mountains. Uh, you're looking at uh, North Carolina and you're standing in Tennessee, or at least close to it. 
<clears throat> Kathy and I um, <clears throat> love mountains. We love fall, and uh, that's no, that's just what it is. It's just I like to go back there mentally, uh, when not physically. Okay, we can move it. Oh, this is in Johnson County. <laughs> I, sne I sneak this one in. Uh, <clears throat> that's behind the house uh, where we just from which we just moved. Um, some of you have, may have been to my house at one time or another. Um, um, that's in DeSoto. And we have uh, three and a half acres, or had three and a half acres. Um, and I just like the occasional pool. Um, and that is, that is right along a trail, by the way. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that one in. That's a we, just, we just moved. I'm now in Shawnee, uh, getting used to a, a new house after 30 years uh, on three and a half acres. Okay, Jonathan. Aha. I've often wondered where the uh, Rio Grande started, starts. I think of it as a Texas river. Right. Um, and not very good thoughts of the Rio Grande <clears throat> the last few months. Uh, but last, <clears throat> last year, Kathy and I were, um, oh gosh, just messing around up in the mountains in Colorado. And if you know where Creed is, yeah. um, it's just you know, west of there, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 miles. Um, and it's on State Highway 49. Um, and I finally found out where the Rio Grande begins. And the range you see in the background is the Continental Divide. And so, um, it ends up in the Gulf of Mexico, I think. Three, it looks like three lakes. We did not walk down there. Um, but next time I think we will. Maybe I'll jump in. <laughs> All right, we can move. Have you ever heard of the Arikari Breaks? Yes. Yes. Anybody else been there? Okay. Well, it's, don't worry. It doesn't cost you much to go there because nobody else does. <laughs> um, but it's, um, if you've ever been on Highway US 36, that runs across uh, near Nebraska, uh, just about 10 miles into Kansas. And, and it's from St. Joe, uh, Missouri, to, uh, it goes on, uh, I'm not sure if it goes to Denver, but it goes, yeah, it does. It goes into Denver. I've so, been road. beg pardon? I've been on that road. I, uh, yeah, we, Kathy, we spent two years in Marysville, which is back in <clears throat> north of Manhattan on 36. Uh, so finally, we decided to see how 36, what it looks like out west. And it's a very pretty road. Uh, I like it anyway. And the Arikari Breaks is, uh, was Indian Territory. It's in Cherokee County. Um, and the canyons uh, are unlike about anywhere else you see in the, in the state. So it's not spectacular, but it's just something I'd heard about for years and decided to take a look at it. Um, and it, it, it flows into uh, Nebraska as well. So it takes up a little bit of Nebraska. So now you've been to Rickery Breaks. I I'm not even sure what breaks means, frankly. A number of years ago, I think it was designated as one of the eight wonders of Kansas. <laughs> are, are there eight? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. Yes. I think that was Kansas. Okay, I'm joking. I'm a Kansan. <laughs> okay, we can move. Anybody been to Lake Wapta Divide? 
I think a comma doesn't belong there, but uh, uh, it sits on the Continental Divide. And it's, I'm coming, we're coming out of uh, Alberta into <laughs> British Columbia. And that train is headed to British Columbia. I'm looking south. It's a pretty highway. We spent the night there in a, in a lodge. And that's just a picture I had to take. Lake Wapta, don't know what that means. Just means a, a lake and a train and a mountain. Okay. Well, if it were Wapiti, it would be elk, but I don't know yeah. what it is. Okay, has anybody been to the new uh, Jerusalem, Little Jerusalem? I know of it's, it. It's the newest park, very much like um, Monu I want to say Monumental Valley. That's not quite right, though. Um, Monument Rocks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, and and Castle um, Castle Rocks. Castle Rocks, which are both east of this, and th this is the bed of the uh, Smoky Mountain. I mean, Smoky, uh, sorry, Smoky River um, that goes from Colorado line all the way to join the Call River around, uh, around Manhattan, I think. So anyway, we decided to go out there and take a look at it because it's only about, what, three years old now, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's and, new. Yeah, brand new, the newest one. And uh, there are several pictures I had. There's a ranch uh, down in the valley. Um, uh, I almost put in instead of this one, but this one represents more the, the little Jerusalem um, that's publicized. It's, it's neat. How far <laughs> of a drive out there is that? I'm sorry, say again? How, how long does it take to drive out there from here? Oh, however long it takes you to drive to uh, Oakley on, on Interstate 70 and then drop south about 30 miles. I don't think it's a one day trip, is it? Well, we made it home that evening. Okay. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, you'd have to figure five hours. Yeah. Okay. This is the other direction. Anybody ever floated the buffalo? Yes. Yeah. In my in my youth. Yeah. <laughs> I mean earlier in your youth. Yes. As long as we're still standing up, we're young. <laughs> um, I just thought that was kind of a fun, fun shot. We are up on a bluff. I did not climb up into a tree to get that shot. That's it's on a bluff. So where is where is the Buffalo float trip? Where is it located? Um, well, let's see. I wrote that down somewhere. We were. Um, it's in, um, well. It's in the generally the north section, north east, north. I'm sorry, northwest section of Arkansas, but it flows eastward, um, north of Little Rock. Um, I can't even think of a town. I'm yeah, I'm having trouble too. North Central Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way to phrase it. Yeah, and it does float pretty much east, and it's it's the most famous floating river in this part of the country. Yeah, beautiful river. I wonder because I showed that to my wife, and she said, "We got to do that." Oh. Well, you, you should go to Bentonville and enjoy Bentonville. And I'm trying to relate it to Bentonville. Is it? Is it? Is it? It's east, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Bentonville. Of course. Um, I'm not. It would be in that area. But it would definitely be east of Bentonville. I'm not sure you can get on to it there, or how close it is, but it's. It would be close, maybe closer to Fayetteville. Right. Okay. And can I clarify something about the- uh, By all means. The Little Jerusalem, um, 
you, you said five hours, that's one way. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I should clarify. Oh, shoot, I was going to leave for, for that right after this session. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, better, better grab a motel in Fort Scott then. <laughs> okay. I like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Has anybody seen this, been there? No. You, historically, you all know the Cumberland Gap. You know, the only way to get across the mountains into Kentucky from the colonial colonies. Um, there's, well, not the only way to get across, but the only way you could bring wagons, stock, and children. Mm -hmm. um, so this is right, it's set in, uh, I say settled Tennessee and Kentucky equally, because it really comes out in Kentucky. I think. But it's, it was very interesting. Um, that's about half or so of the uh, characters uh, there. And it's, it was fun. Just a little piece of history. Okay, where are we, Jonathan? Keep jogging back and forth across the state. Ah. Here we go. Do you recognize this river? You've seen that water. <laughs> I saw it very recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, the Rio Grande, <clears throat> somewhat away from the lakes that we saw it start. Taos is uh, just about straight ahead, but and to the left. I just thought this kind of pretty setting. No canoes. Were you there about September, Dick? Yeah, it, it's a fall trip. Well, I know that, but I, I'm trying to think. We went we went down to uh, to a wedding in Albuquerque uh, with some uh, uh, niece and nephews. Um. And I, th I think it's, I think September was it. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, where are we? <clears throat> Is that majestic or what? Yep. Yes. Have you ever heard of the uh, Cascade Loop in uh, Washington State? Mm-hmm. Uh, some friends of ours uh, several years ago had told us about it and we had never been to, uh, to Washington. So we flew to Seattle and spent a, uh, 10 days um, doing everything in Washington we could think to do. We spent most of the time around the, uh, uh, around the, the port, but we made a, made a point that the last half of the trip it's a, it is the Cascade Loop uh, is you start uh, the U.S. Highway 2 uh, running east um, across the mountains. And then um, before you get to the Columbia River, right as time you get to the Columbia River, you head north a ways and then pick up State Highway 20 and take it back towards Seattle. And you'll end up about... 30 miles north of Seattle. And it's, and it's a bit, hence the loop. It's, uh, it's a fabulous drive. Has anybody else taken that? Okay, I'd highly recommend it. If you're ever, ever up in the Northwest and you have the time, um, two or three days um, will get you, <clears throat> will get, let you see everything. Um, and there are plenty of hiking trails, Jonathan. Probably but, steep, steep ones. I gotta say, not many of them are Kansas oriented. Yeah, just fabulous, beautiful country. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Gorgeous shot. So. Hey, pardon? It's oh. a gorgeous shot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. 
<laughs> now, where did you take this one? And not mine. It's a, uh, it's a, I stole it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So, off oh. a site called Pixels. So I didn't think they looked quite like you. Well, I thought that was a good likeness of you and me, since we were <laughs> co-presenters. Good job. Any questions or comments uh, on what you've seen and heard today? Well, I have, I have a few parks uh, and trails that we have enjoyed, though I didn't send in any pictures. Um, the, the Mill Creek Streamway parks and trails uh, they're probably on your map that you have, Jonathan. Do you think they are? I think so. They start in uh, Olathe and go up to like Holiday Drive and 435. Though they're very nice walks. Well, I know part of that, uh, the Heritage Farms was a, is part of that, I believe, because it goes through. Well, except I take it back. That's Little Mill Creek. You're talking about Mill Creek? Yeah, there's. A, I was looking it up before the before we met today, and there's at least four different parks that are called Mill Creek Streamway Parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one's at I-435 and Holiday Drive, west of there. Another one is off of Johnson Drive. Another one is off of 87th and Woodland. And then if you've taken the uh, walk around 119th and Northgate over uh, west of Ridgeview, that is also part of the Mill Creek Streamway system. I'm making myself a note. I have to check that out. We also have enjoyed the Black Hoof Park, which is at um, 90th and Monticello in Lenexa. Most of it, it's paved most of the way around, but you can go all the way around the lake if you are willing to duck trees and, and walk on dirt. It's very nice. That sounds good. And of course, Black Hook, Black Hook Black Park. Woof, like, like oh, a horse. Oh, woof. okay. Yeah, it's a Lenexa Park. It is. You guys, was, I need to I need to leave, but thank you very much and hi to everybody and thanks. Bye, Linda. Bye bye. 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 Do you have any other ones, Libby, on your list? We always we always like walking around Olathe Lake in their pathways. And also Kill Creek. Kill Creek Park. Yeah, we we've been to Olathe Lake and we've been to uh, Kill Creek, and, and I like them both. They're very, very nice. Mm -hmm. The one time we went to Olathe Lake was on a day when we had about 35 mile an hour winds. Oh. Yeah. And uh, it was a little tough to get up and down the hills and, and around, but it was, it was quite, quite beautiful. Of course, it was also kind of wintry that day, so we've got to go back there once things, uh, now that things are kind of blossomed out. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions, folks? Okay, well, thank you very much for coming. Um, I hope you found this enjoyable and- uh, Always. Yes, thank you, Jonathan and Dick. Thank you. Have Dick, a good rest of the day. Dogs?